I am a carpenter uh, by trade and also the chair of the Sisters in the Brotherhood in Toronto at Local 27. So, but I do wear many hats. I am a, a community organizer, a certified coach, and also a, a mentor at Toronto Community Benefit Network and an ambassador. So for me, it's important to really empower, educate, and also give access to our communities to learn about the trade so that they could make a living, uh, a great living. What got you into you know, to joining the, the trade? The trade yes. That's an excellent question. For me, I've been always passionate about uh, the infrastructure, the architectural design of buildings in the city. And uh, I had to decide, I couldn't decide at first which union because I wanted to do either carpentry or electrical or HVAC, heating, cool air, air conditioning and ventilation. So I couldn't decide, so I did some research thanks to Toronto Community Benefit Network, which is a labor coalition, non-for-profit organization that finds meaningful work in uh, the trades. So I uh, was able to get into that and uh, from there to the research. Electrical is great, but to start, for me, it was really low pay, whereas afterwards, once you get licensed, you're making 80 an hour and more where I looked at uh, carpentry, I'm like, okay, 90% of the work is being done by a carpenter in construction. And at the same time, I get to learn how to build a, a model home, like, for, like according to the building code in Canada. And also I get to be, as a general uh, 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 carpenter apprentice, I get to be a scaffolder technician, I get to do flooring, I get to do trim work, in, which is interior finishing, drywall, so many different things where, I could use it every day. So I'm like, why not? So that's why I ended up uh, joining uh, like Local 27 as a carpenter. And because as a carpenter, you get to learn to read the blueprint, and you will know where the plumbers need to do put all their things, the electrical where they need to be before you put any studs, any, anything there. Yes. OK, now um, your background is um, from Senegal. From Senegal. Yes, okay. I'm originally from Senegal. I was born in Senegal, but grew up in Toronto, in Canada. Okay. And just love everything to do with the trade, empowering women, technology, construction, just anything that really helps another individual get to their full potential. Amazing, amazing. And tell me why, um, okay, now, you now with the background, I am construction here in the architectural design yes. if they yes. do any design it, it can be the same the only thing is it's the build what we build like in Canada because we have the cold season uh, we have four seasons right and where in Africa it's the rain season and the like in Senegal not Africa my apologies in Senegal is rain season and dry season so when it comes to when we build here according to the building code right. you need to insulate the walls so on and so forth so that you know heating cooling can go through the, like the like the weather changes here okay. it gets extremely cold so it will be different yeah and also one, one of the i've always been fascinated with the, with the architect apparently you know the window has to be set in a certain direction and then the door has to be done in a certain way the, the shape and all that to do with um with either you know um, wind and the sun, uh, how does that, is that it, it depends because building it's according to the building code. Yeah. Like with the building okay. code, there are requirements that we need to follow in order to put where the height of the windows has a certain guidelines that you need yeah. to follow in order to okay. build. Well, I guess yes. you know, that's, a, that's, that's a silly question of me. No, no, no. It's just, it's just, this is just me, right? Okay, and then also what I wanted to uh, ask you is, uh, for someone who has no idea, no background in, in construction, wanted to join the, the company, you know, where, where, what are the steps that you have to take? That's an excellent question. Uh, through Toronto Community Benefit Network, yeah. uh, which is, uh, they do have the Next Gen Builders Program, yeah. where you have mentors uh, that are matching with mentees. Yeah. We have the Newcomers Program, we have the Black Youth Academy Program. Yeah. 
and thanks to them that's why I'm with uh, the Carpenters Union nice. however with Carpenters Union in order to join you just need to be 16 or older okay. have grade 10 in English math okay. mathematics okay. and be able to like work in Canada okay. and also have a house and a phone number okay. and then from there 90% of the training is done on the job site you you pay you get your pay your earning as you're learning, and 10% of the training is done in uh, the in class at the school at the College of Carpenters Allied Trade, and uh, you are with an instructor and you have hands on. So like I was saying, the, like it's three sessions of. Um, eight weeks that are mandatory for the government uh, mandatory by the Ministry of Education I should say and uh, they're eight weeks and within those eight weeks like the first year for instance you do um, you learn the skills the, like the, the tools you learn how to you have a lot of projects you work you do scaffolding you learn the, how to read the blueprint you learn how to also do so many different things then the second year like that's after working a year or two then from there you are learning with three or four different people to build a model home from foundation to roof. Third year we're doing uh, automatically we're doing we're building like a uh, stairs, but the uh, commercial ones, so that you know how to really do with the concrete and stuff. So that's, it's really amazing. That's an interesting process. Eh? Yes, yes, yes. So you're saying that you know, after after this training, one can survive anywhere in the world and actually be hands on in the construction business. What does it take to be able to run your own construction business? Oh, that's an excellent question. When it comes to uh, the apprenticeship program, it's yeah. like you need to do like about 1800 hours every year. So 1800 hours is really 37 and a half per week. Multiply by four is 150. Multiply by 12 is 1800 hours. It's just to give it in layman's term what it means. So now you need about 7,200 hours to complete the apprenticeship, which is five years. However, you could finish it at, you could challenge to do your red seal, which is the uh, standard certificate that you get in uh, Ontario or in Canada in order to really, you know, be recognized as an expert carpenter. So once you have that and you could open your own entrepreneurship, your own business, be a GC, like a contractor, you know, general contractor, and from there you can hire a few other people to work. Because from there, you, you're like, you already passed the journey, a uh, journey person, which is after four years, you know the ins and out, but you're still learning with technology, with everything that is happening. However, you're able to be an entrepreneur, because at the end of the day, what you need to realize, where when it comes to construction, the buildings are getting older. We have more and more immigration immigrants that are coming in into Canada. That means we are consistently in need. And also the data says that 155,000 workers that are baby boomers are retiring by 2030. So we need all these skill trades to come. And when we talk, to, we talk about skill trade, we're talking about the electrician, the plumbers, the automotive, uh, like uh, HVAC, like we need everyone in there to come and work. So the young youth, that's why now the government is really investing a lot of money, making sure that people can really join. And the beautiful thing about Toronto Community Benefit Network, we're here to make sure that we have community benefit agreement. That means if a developer decides to build something in a neighborhood, we want to make sure that those people who live in that neighborhood have access to a career, like have a career into the trade. Whether it's administrative, because we still need those administrators, we still need the project manager, we still need also the engineers, and also those laborers and the carpenters to do the work. This is such a beautiful work that you guys are doing. And I actually, you know, I get so emotional when I see that, you know, the amount of work that you do. And they tell me, I know that, you know, it's a challenge. Because we're accessing the actual labor. The right people, you know, because it's a hard work. How do you guys, you know, also go on about it? Because it's like quite a physical work. It is. And then there's always a timeline, right? And then to meet up. Yes, when it comes to the projects, most of the uh, project managers and the, uh, the contractors, they have time like to finish this work. So yes, it is needed. The only thing is now the government is looking into also hopefully getting 
foreigners to come also uh, and uh, be part of the, the trades and then ha be hired. However, we're saying also people who are here who are unemployed need to work as well. So it's a give and take, but hopefully by just uh, informing and uh, like informing people that the, the importance of the trade. Whether I'm a woman or you're a man, there's no gender bias. We get paid the same. It is a physical work, but at the end of the day, the body is just a muscle. It's something that you develop. I work at the job site. Yes, I do. You see my nails, but <laughs> I wear gloves and I, I am a carpenter. So I am at the job site day in, day out, Monday to Friday. And guess what? If, for instance, you were working Monday to Friday, they ask you to work Saturday, Sunday, it's double pay. Uh, we have pension. We have full benefit, 100%. So, and then also we have, also we're part of the union. So we get to uh, learn, we get to go like right now with my third term, I'm going to Las Vegas to do a leadership course, come back, next year writing the exam, hopefully. Yeah. I'm, I'm so amazed. I cannot thank you enough. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Yes, go ahead. With my own company, I build mobile homes. Oh, and then we do renovation. Oh, wow. As I am an apprentice, yes, I do work with journey people and colleagues. And then from there we get to also build. So you're able to be an entrepreneur and also be in the trade at the same time. That is so amazing. I'm so impressed. Really, really impressed. So um, the mobile home, how does it work with the mobile home? Does it mean that when you move elsewhere you can move? Yeah, the mobile home that we built, it was it's a project for indigenous communities. Uh, they were really impacted or they are really impacted with COVID now that it's done, but it was last year. So what we've done is, is uh, and like like rooms, like two rooms units where they could, once we finish built it, they put wheels and then they put it and send it to Mohawk. And uh, from there, the Mohawk community would uh, enjoy it and afterward they could use it as their own homes. And, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, isn't that rewarding? Doing the work of a human being, knowing that, you know, you're uplifting the community, is giving people back life. When it comes to the trade, there isn't anything more wonderful than that because you get to have tangible projects that you work on, million, billion dollar projects. And when you complete, you could say you were on that project, that project, that project. And that's something that no one can take away, take it away from you. You know what I mean? I have different backgrounds. I wear many hats. But by far, the trade is something that is so rewarding to me. I can, I can tell, just by looking at your personality, your persona, and then the energy around you already, I, I can just tell that you know you really do I love what you do. I am And then you go even love. beyond ordinary to give the best out of the you know, out of, out of it. And you know, this is amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. You know, it uh, means everything to us, to me, and the community as well. Thank you so much. Hopefully, come join us. No, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Hey, my name is Joel Kijaka and I'm a fourth term apprentice with the Carpenters Union Local 27. I've been, um, I joined the industry through our pre-apprenticeship program uh, offered at the College of Carpenters in Woodbridge. I did the formal course, it was seven weeks long, after which I was uh, assigned an employee and I started work right away. I was in the formal industry for almost three years, after which I transitioned into finished carpentry, which is what I do at the moment. How do you join the union? Well, it's simple. If you're still in high school, you can join through the OYAP, which is a, a government program where they expose you to the different trades and you pick a trade at the end. You can join through a pre-apprenticeship program, like uh, I did. There is a formal pre-apprenticeship program, there is a millwork program, and there is a scaffolding program. All those are accessible to you on the website, the ccit.ca. Other ways you can join is by having experience in the industry, which uh, is um, you, you bring it in, you write your resume, you bring it in, and uh, your experience is uh, matched up with uh, the apprenticeship journey, and uh, it determines where you end up when you start. Uh, working as a carpenter is a very rewarding career. We do have a pension and benefits. You get your full benefits after 300 hours of work and you start earning a pension right after your second, your second year. This is a career in which you can make uh, six figures as a journeyman. Our rate at the moment is uh, over $48 an hour. Our next year is going to go up to $50 an hour. All this in a career where you do not need a lot of education since you get all of it on the side, on the tools. 90% is on site and only 10% is in school. Wow.
that was amazing. That's really an amazing. And um, I actually love what I just said. You know, everything that you said makes so much sense. What inspired you to get into this industry? Uh, actually, what inspired me was my dad. He is an electrician by trade, and I used to work for him in the summers. After when I was going away for college. I decided to do construction engineering at George Brown College and uh, after graduating, graduation I had a job, I did the job but the press wasn't, wasn't uh, have high energy and it was a job that required a lot of sitting down. So I uh, transitioned into the trade. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. So uh, this, this is, uh, it sounds very positive yes. and even you know, the, the reward is actually amazing. So, uh, one also one of the, the challenges, what are the challenges you know, that actually yes, face you know, in the industry? Well, one would be accessing information, of which uh, right now I volunteer with a very good organization, Toronto Community Benefits Network, which is an organization that uh, provides pathways for newcomers, and uh, we do outreach programs in, uh, in schools, and uh, where events like this, where we put the word out yes, to that's uh, one of the challenges. And I, I believe it's uh, it, it was my challenge getting in, finding information on the unions and how to join the unions. But uh, with an organization like Toronto Community Benefits, all that information is there. And uh, they have uh, mentorship programs where you go for a cohort and after the cohort you're matched up with a mentor who is actually in that exact trade that you're trying to join. Okay. So one, um, you know, so for one has to go to the school to not do the government to join the You can't do that. No, no, no. no. Yeah. You can come straight to the organization. Okay. We just uh, get some funding from the government by you come straight to the organization. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. Man. Thank you. Nice uh, talking to you. Nice talking to you.